G'day viewers, it's the end of another week. You know it, I know it, the world's totally fucked up. Here's the evidence presented for you on Totally Fucked Up Friday. Totally fucked up! Totally fucked I'm going to start with the latest instalment in a long running series of mine, why the internet is fucking doomed and we're all going to miss it one day when it's gone. This week in New Zealand, just to change country, uh, a three strikes and you're out law was passed. Basically, if you good old, or if you get charged with copyright infringement three times, your internet gets cut off. Now, there are a couple of reasons this is wrong and totally fucked up. There are always somebody to go, uh, oh, well, if you don't breach copyright, you've got nothing to worry about. Fuck off, okay? First, this is talking about if you are accused by a copyright holder, and sometimes they're not even the real copyright holder, but if you are, if one person in a house is accused three times, the entire house can be cut off from the internet. Wow, okay, so like if one person, I was going to say if one person in a house speeds three times, everyone in the house is cut off from driving. But it's not even that, it's not taken to court and found guilty. These laws are being repeatedly set up around the world as if you are accused three times, then you get your internet cut off. Not proven, not convicted, accused. That alone is so morally and legally reprehensible, it should be thrown out. And actually, if you're from New Zealand, or if you've just been paying attention to these issues in New Zealand, in New Zealand you'll think, wait, didn't they get put up a little while ago and then beaten down because everyone objected to it? Yes, it was presented and then beaten down because of fierce opposition. But this time, it was snuck in. There was a bunch of emergency legislation around earthquake recovery uh, funding and support, and this was snuck in along with it. Everything about this law is dishonest and fucked. And it just, the people who are going to represent this can't be trusted. In the European Union uh, and in America, they are appointing people to legislative oversight who are lobbyists for these industries. And these industries are not about artists' rights. They spin the lie about, oh, there'll be no new content if we don't stop the internet. There'll be no new content if these fucking bandits aren't stopped. There are, there are a whole bunch of recording artists with pending lawsuits against record labels who've been stealing their music, breaching contract. It's not the internet that's the enemy, or it's not the internet that's the only enemy. It's these fucking close-minded people who just want to haul the money to them. And it just makes me sick. On another awesome example of they can't be trusted, in uh, the US, uh, a government department with the acronym of ICE. I've forgotten, but I wrote it down. It's Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Uh, they've been seizing internet domains in the name of Homeland Security, but it was representing corporate interests against them. Oh, they're infringing, they're infringing. Shut down the whole domain. And there's been, there's been no legal oversight of their procedure. They haven't had court orders, they haven't had warrants to do this. They've just unilaterally declared, we're taking that domain. And they've been proven wrong repeatedly. <laughs> but the head of this agency is currently under investigation because some child porn images were found on his computer. Now I stress he's under investigation. He's not convicted. We don't know. It's been called child porn. We don't know what it is. We don't know how it got on his computer. There's an investigation. He's on forced administrative leave. See, I'm being reasonable. I'm not calling him a kiddie porn enthusiast. I'm not calling him a child raper. I'm saying he's under investigation. They, four? Holy fuck, under these three strikes and outlaws, he'd be life in prison as a serial sex offender. It's one rule for them and one rule for us, and that is totally fucked up. And now to a story for someone who is going to jail for child sex offences. In Australia, a church youth worker has just been convicted of offences involving sexual activity uh, with someone under 16 and someone who was under his care at a church youth group. It's a pretty ugly and sordid story. Uh, 
when you see the chain of events, this youth worker who was 22 uh, had been involved in some online chat with uh, a kid in his care who was under 16. We're talking about the kid was troubled about his sexuality and so they had an online chat, which is really inappropriate. Uh, and then they were actually on a youth camp and the, uh, the youth came up to the counsellor to talk about it and said to the counsellor, does the fact that you've been talking about this, does this mean you want to have sex with me? And the counsellor said, no, I'm not allowed to, that's against the rules. And the kid said, I know it is, but you're the one who brought it up. And then they went off to a toilet cubicle and had sex. And the guy seemed surprised he got convicted. But his defence was that he went to the cubicle and indulged in sexual activity with someone under 16 who was under his care to save him from homosexuality. Because apparently he wasn't into it. He's just been chatting to this kid online about sex and then goes into a toilet and has sex with him to save him from having sex with men. Wow! W would it be totally wrong for me to bring up at this point that I know there are people out there who think oral sex between consenting adults is wrong. I think uh, a woman performing oral sex on me is immoral. I'm really interested in that and if there's any women out there who want to save me from my own lustful urges, I'm interested in talking about that. That really was totally fucked up, wasn't it? But now to the story that has made me the angriest this week. And it had a lot of competition. But this story made me the angriest for a number of reasons. And I shall enumerate them for you. There's a lot of religiously motivated pressure in the US to ban abortion. Oh, they talk around it, they go on with all sorts of shit about protecting fetuses and health and this. It's banning abortion. I understand some people want to ban abortion. I understand some people hold uh, a moral standpoint that abortion is never acceptable and there is always some way around abortion. I think those people are completely disconnected from reality and that moral standing just cannot be sustained in a real world that doesn't conform to black and white views of the world. But I understand there are some people that solely have a genuine moral objection to it. It's just that the people controlling public discourse in politics and the media in the US are stinking fucking liars. They will not simply stick to, I believe on religious grounds, this is unacceptable, so I will oppose it. They lie. They lie constantly. They never tell the truth on the matter. The only time they would ever tell the truth is if the sole thing they said is, based on this religious text, I believe abortion should never happen. Anything else they say is a fucking lie. And the worst, absolute worst case I've ever seen of it happened in the last week with a US Senator. His name's John Kyle and he made a speech on the floor of the Senate where he said 90% of what Planned Parenthood do is abortion. Because the conservative forces have been arguing they should strip all funding from Planned Parenthood because it's all about abortion. And a lot of supporters of uh, Planned Parenthood, and indeed people like me who support a woman's right to choose abortion as an option, have said, no, you know, fuck off. Besides, Planned Parenthood do a lot of important things besides abortion. And he's come out and said 90% of what they do is abortion. This is what is called a stinking fucking lie. It turns out that about 3% of Planned Parenthood's work is abortion. The rest is supporting women in different health issues and some of it is about the decision process going towards an abortion. But actual abortions accounts for, I think, 3% of their funding. If he had stood up and said he opposed even that 3%, I would have still thought he was a prick, but at least he would have been telling the truth. But he told, I, I, I don't know how you could lie more. I mean, I suppose you could say 100%, but he said more than 90%. Now, why I want to 
I do. I want to hurt this person because he deserves to be hurt for telling such a horrible lie on such an important topic. Because after being called out on, hey, guess what? You're a fucking liar. Uh, he's had his office issue a statement that says, oh, you know what? That wasn't intended to be a factual statement. I was just trying to talk about the fact they do abortion. Here's a tip, buddy. If what you're saying isn't factual, don't fucking say it! This was not an off-the-cuff remark. This was not an off-the-record remark. This was not someone door-stopping him and catching him off guard. This was a planned speech in the Senate. This guy sat down deliberately to tell uh, the most outrageous lie imaginable. This is a most disgusting, filthy human being who won't even accept responsibility for it. He's saying he's done nothing wrong. This disgusting, vile excuse of a human being could not possibly redeem themselves, but they could start by saying, what I did is so unconscionable, I can't in good conscience represent anyone. There are a lot of good moral people who oppose abortion and I just made all them look like a bigger cunt as I look. Therefore, I have to go. But no, no one takes responsibility. No one takes responsibility for what they say. And that is why this world is going down the fucking shithole. Not because of religion generally. I don't believe that. Not because of politics generally. Because people in every aspect of life are not taking responsibility! <laughs>